I can't wait to show you how easy it is to create YouTube thumbnails in Adobe Spark Post. Okay, so let's get started. I'm here on the home page of Adobe Spark Post on the web, and we have all of these presets here that we can use to just start our post. But I'm going to go over here to the left hand menu and just point out a couple of things that you can do here. So under libraries, you can actually access the assets that you have in your Creative Cloud libraries, which is really helpful. And then brands, if I click here, you can see there's a button here that allows you to create a brand. I've already created a brand here. And if I just click to go in here, you can see I have logos and colors and typefaces already loaded that I can always access from within Spark. Projects just shows all of my folders where I keep all of the different graphics that I create. And then back to home. And I'm gonna start here with this plus symbol. So wherever you see the plus sign, in Adobe Spark, this is a great place to start to create something. So under here, I'm gonna choose custom size graphic because we're making a thumbnail for YouTube. And so I'm gonna type in the size of my YouTube videos, 1920 by 1080. And then click next. And here I'm starting from scratch. So over in the right hand menu, you can choose from any of these items here. I'm going to go ahead and click add and then choose photo. Now what I usually do is upload photos and I can show you that later. But for the sake of this example, I'll just go to the find free photos button and type in laptop and see what we can find. So these results are from unsplash. If I scroll down here, Let's see if there's anything I can use here. So I'm going to click on this one and choose move freely. And that allows me to position and scale them however I like. Now I'll go and click the add button again and I'll get another photo. Let's go back to the free photos and I'll choose this one right here. If you choose pin to background, the photo will just fill the entire space and it's a little more limited in how you can scale it but I'm gonna choose move freely. And then let's put this in this corner. All right. Now, when you want one photo to be behind the other, you can use the stacking order. So if I click on the photo to select it and go over here to this menu, I can just move this down in the stacking order. Looks like I'm gonna to need to move this up and then I can drag it up like this. And there are guides here that light up to let you know when you're kind of at the midpoint so those are helpful. So I can have these two photos sort of centered on each other. Next, I'm going to add some type, but I want a background for that type. So I'm going to go back to the add button. And for this, I'm going to choose icon. Now icons can come in the form of just basic shapes like this. And then there's also little pictograms and arrows and all kinds of things. Just type in what you're looking for here. In this case, I'm just looking for a square, just a solid rectangle that I can use and sort of stretch it out, maybe have it overlap the photos a little bit. And again, you can use the stacking order slider to bring it to the back or bring it to the front and change the opacity. If there was something in the background I wanted to show through, then I can go to color and change the color and my brand colors are right here. So I can use those, or I can jump here into the current color, grab the eyedropper tool and just select a color. Grab the eyedropper tool again, maybe look for something darker like so. Next, I want to add my logo. So I'm going to go back over to the plus button and choose logo. And here I've got several different logos that I can work with. When you click on one, it adds it. Now I'm going to just bring this over here and enlarge it. And I love these guides that let you know when things are centered. And then I need a title for my video. So again, I'll go over to the add button. This time choose text. And you can choose from all of these different presets here. There's a lot of really fun ones that just sort of get you started like this right here. 
And when you click on it, it'll just add it to your design and then you can modify it. So if I double click on this type, it brings me into where I can type and then I can type in my message and then click done, stretch that out. And here I can play with the line spacing, the alignment, and just move it into place. And there you go. So anytime you click on something, it gives you the opportunity to work with it. So I can work with the type and all the type settings. I can work with the color of the background just by selecting it and clicking on color. I can choose any of these photographs and work with the photos and even click to replace the photo. So there's so much that you can do here. But what I love is that your work is constantly being saved. And when you go back to the Spark logo in the upper left corner, you can get back to all of your projects. And these become the templates for future projects. So you're not always reinventing the wheel. So this saves me a lot of time. I keep all of my projects divided up into folders. So if I go to this projects folder icon, I can go to my YouTube folder and see all of my thumbnails that I've created here. And what I love about this is that when I want to create a new one, all I need to do is go to this little three dot menu here and just choose duplicate. And then I can rename it. So I'm gonna call this Adobe Spark. And then click on the pencil icon to edit the copy. And from here, I'm not having to create this from scratch. I just have a few changes to make and this has saved me a lot of time. I can just double click on the type to change the title. And I don't even have to capitalize because I'm using a font that works in all caps. Click done. I'll resize this and everything's stacking up because I'm using a type lockup here, which you have the choice of here, capitalize and fit next to all of these different alignment options. Then I can go and change the color. And now I want to change the background photo. So I've just clicked on it and I'm going to choose this button here, replace, just click on upload photo. And then I can go to my desktop and choose a screenshot and work with the sizing. And then when I go back to the home page, I can see that thumbnail here in my recent projects. And now I want to talk about exporting. So I've made a few changes here and to export this project, I'm going to need to click on edit project and then go over to the download icon in the upper right corner and choose the file type that you want. If you're concerned about file size, then you want to choose JPEG. But since that's not much of an issue with YouTube, I'm going to choose PNG because it's going to get the best quality, the crispest type and it's good for bold graphics like this. And then click on start download. For PNG, you need to choose whether you want a transparent or a solid color. Mine is a solid background, so I just choose solid. And then it arrives in my downloads folder. Then on YouTube in the video details page, I'll just scroll down to where the upload thumbnail button is go into my downloads folder and just drag that thumbnail right over the button on YouTube and then click save. So that's my process for making thumbnails for my YouTube channel. Spark saves me a lot of time and it allows me to make not only these thumbnails, but all kinds of graphics for social media and my website. I just love Spark. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Be sure to subscribe, like the video and share it. All of those things help to spread the word and check out my other YouTube tutorials on my channel. Thank you for watching.